Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another video, another weekly episode of course, and of course I've got some stuff to show you. Alright, so, we, um, what did we do? We looked up, we looked last week at the, uh, 143rd scale Hot Wheels, we checked out the Countach. I did end up picking up the Corvette. Alright, so here it is, here's the Corvette. We got it in its 143rd scale form here from Hot Wheels. Now, uh, these are peg warming for sure at my uh, my local Target right now. Uh, the first wave of them sold immediately, or the first box of them or whatever. They got three of each one, boom, gone. Now, there's about five or six of these hanging there, and there's a few Countaches as well. So initial thoughts on this is uh you know i read all your comments too from the the previous video thank you very much for those by the way and uh yeah everybody kind of has the same sort of opinion about these that they're just not going to last they're not going to sell very well at least here in the u.s not sure what's going to happen internationally but and they are offered internationally by the way but we got this we're going to take a look at it so i decided also to pick up this for science all right this is like the Jada, I think it's a Jada, Maisto, Maisto, Maisto. It's a Maisto 141 scale pullback uh, Corvette C8. These are, I think, $6. This is $25, and it's actually 143rd scale, but I got them, you know, what do we get? What do we get that makes this $25 and it makes this 6 bucks? So... I thought that would be fun to do a little comparison. So we're going to do that. Um, that should be fun. I've got, oh, other things that I found in store. I found the latest wave of the two-pack Target exclusive Hot Wheels uh, car culture. Uh, I, again, I am just, I don't know. Am I just, I'm losing my passion for Hot Wheels a bit, you know. I hate to like admit it, but it's like it's happening and there's nothing I can really do, but I got both. I got these. Okay. So this one, especially like this is two repeat vehicles, basically. I don't know if there's anything different. You guys will have to let me know if there's anything different in these. I'm not going to dig out the old models to, to compare them. Um, this one, I believe is that one's a repeat there. That one I don't think is a repeat. And then this one, the, that's a repeat. That is not, I believe. So you guys will educate me in the comments. You always do. And I appreciate that greatly. I, just, I don't have time to really do the homework right now. So that's, unfortunately, I can't provide you all the information. Like there's a subtle difference between colors and stuff and whatnot between the repeats. I honestly don't know. All right. So there's that. Um, and then I also got an Ultra Red. This I did not find in the store. This was, of course, my buddy Dicastrum keeps buying Ultra Reds for me to sort of like pay me for my time and hubbing for him. And that's what he's been doing is picking up Ultra Reds for me. So we got this uh, Mitsubishi. And this is pretty cool. So I'm glad to get this off the list. That's awesome. All right. <clears throat> then we got some Mini GT. We got this guy here. This Pandem Sylvia. Uh, I think this car is pretty cool looking. So I decided to pick it up and I like that it's in green. I don't know. It's a good color for this car. Looks pretty good. Uh, we're going to open up that, of course, in the next segment. I got this from, uh, who did I get this one from? I might have actually ordered this with another car. I think I, I think I did. I think I got it from eBay, actually. And then I got these two, Kaido House. This is my favorite tooling from Kaido House. I got these two from SC Diecast, my local uh, Diecast hobby dealer. I've already opened them up to check if they're chases. They're not, unfortunately, but we got we got these two. All right, so there's that. Then in other news, I went to the Iola car show. In the past, when I've gone to Iola. Um, I've spent the entire day, normally what I would do is I'd go there on a Thursday, that's the day it starts, because that's the least crowded day, get off of work, go there, like, I mean, 
take a vacation day, go there with my buddy Crazy Todd. We go walk around looking for diecast pretty much all day long and not even look at real cars or do anything else. Well, this is what tells you that I'm sort of losing the passion. It's either that or I just don't have or have too much stuff, so there's less stuff for me to find. Maybe that's it. I'm going to show you everything I bought from that little trip. And uh, actually spent hardly any time looking for diecast. Spent a lot of other time taking pictures and stuff of actual vehicles, real cars. And then, which I will post to my Facebook, by the way. I might post some to my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, my Instagram profile is for, I have one for the diecast pictures. And I also have one for just my random photography stuff. So check that out. It's champ. DJK images is what it currently is. I might may change that soon, but that's what it is right now. And then uh, on Facebook, my Facebook profile is public. Like my personal, my personal Facebook profile is public. You can see anything I post without even being friends or following me. So you can check me out there as well. I've got the champion DJK one and then my personal David Kylie one. So you can check that out if you want. I post all sorts of pictures to that, mostly just pictures that I take with my, whatever, with my cameras. I don't really post a lot of family stuff on there. It's mostly just pictures that I take, you know, with my other hobby, my photography hobby. And that's why, uh, maybe that's why part of why I'm losing the diecast passion a little bit is because I've got another hobby that I'm kind of sinking funds into. Not that I'm going to start a photography channel anytime soon, but who knows? I wouldn't put that out of the realm of possibility. There's a ton of those out there, but I don't know. It might be fun to do, but I'm not a professional, so whatever. All right. I'm going to show you everything I got from Iola, which isn't much. I picked up some Matchbox. I got this Matchbox T-Bird concept. These detailed matchboxes that I like, these matchbox collectors. And of course, we're going to open all this stuff up. So we got that T Bird, and we got this uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee in that same series. And then from the Barrett Jackson collection, we got the Chevy Bel Air hardtop. I may have spent like $20. Well, maybe $28. Bucks, about, it's about what I spent. I think while I was there, I got this uh, Corgi Firebird still on the card. We're going to crack that open. Uh, I got this Johnny Lightning Patriotic Puzzle. The only reason why I bought this was for the Firebird in it. So I picked that up. And then I got this Corvette. This is like a Racing Champions. It's a Corvette that looks like it's in like Subaru livery. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got uh, this Dodge Viper, which I already had one of these, but mine was missing one of the, uh, the rims. You'll see how these wheels are put together when I open them up. And then I picked up this, this Ertl, uh Vintage American Muscle. I picked this up, and I already have two other, two of these. Uh, so this is a third, and probably going to hook up my buddy Dumas with it. I think he wants it, so or needs it. So, yeah. That's that. Uh, so that's pretty much what we're going to look at. Now, I'm not saying like I'm, I'm quitting collecting. Like that's not happening. I'm just, uh, I'm at a narrowing down point, maybe really going to start. I talk about it all the time, but I may really start to, to slim down uh, stuff that I keep. I'll still get a bunch of stuff for the sake of showing it on the channel, and then I may move some of it on. It may just be kind of what I'll do. I'll get stuff, I'll show it on the channel, I'll open it, I'll photograph it, possibly, if it's cool enough, and then I might move it on. Um, and that might be kind of what I do. I'll kind of photo document stuff, uh, maybe take some cool product product photography shots of it, and then maybe I'll move it on loose. Yeah, I'm going to take a loss. You know, everything I buy, I'm going to lose money on because uh, basically I'm going to buy it carded or buy it brand new. Most cases, I'll open it and then I'll, you know, use it for what I'm going to use it for and then I'll move it on. But I think kind of the funds I'll make from YouTube slash, you know, whatever, you know, kind of will make up that gap. I don't know. 
we'll see. I'm just kind of spitballing here. Not really sure. Obviously, there's some stuff I'm still going to always keep, like my Auto Road collection. Uh, there are castings that I collect. There's certain castings that I try to get every variation of. I mean, who am I kidding? I'm not going to get rid of that much stuff. I mean, I say I'm going to do it, and then I never, I never do it, because that stuff takes time as well. Oh, another cool thing about the Iola Car Show thing was uh, Vice Grip Garage, one of my favorite YouTube channels. I'm just a big fan. Um, and he's kind of from the Midwest area originally. Now he lives in Tennessee, whatever. But he was at Iola doing a live build and filming like a video, filming a video of him you know, swapping a transmission in a Firebird or whatever. So I took some pictures of him doing that, which is kind of cool. And I'm, you know, if I get some, I got to look through those and call through those. And if there's any good ones, I'll probably end up posting it to my Facebook. But yeah, that was another cool thing too. So I bought a shirt. Um, yeah, whatever. So that was kind of neat to to see him in person. I didn't really get to meet him or anything like that because we didn't stick around long enough for like the signing meet and greet sort of thing. But uh, yeah, that was cool too. So I had a good week. Had a good week. All right, let's go ahead and uh, flip the camera around. Let's get this diecast stuff open. I'm sorry for rambling on about personal stuff or whatever. Maybe you guys enjoy hearing that. Maybe you don't. But uh like to let you guys know, you know, where I'm at, um, and what's going on. And, uh, I still have so much stuff I got to show you. I mean, I got tons of stuff over here, so we are not running out of content anytime soon. I just haven't been buying as much. Okay. Photography, photography, uh, you know, photography stuff is expensive. That's part of it. That's part of why, um, so I'm just having, you know, I can't justify spending money on that when there's something else I want for this other thing. Okay. All right. That's enough. Let's go ahead and let's open up this stuff. All right. So let's start this uh, second segment by getting this big guy out of the way. So 143rd scale Hot Wheels. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still probably going to stick with my plan and I'm going to pick up all of them. Okay. I'm going to pick up all the ones that come out. Unless the series lasts. So if it lasts, let's just say if it lasts longer than a year, I'll probably stop. But I will pick up all of them for now. So we've already talked about kind of this at length in what is all included here. But we will rehash because... Uh, like I said, I've got, so you get, you get this clamshell packaging. The packaging is awesome. I will say that right off the bat. I love the packaging. You get the best of both, both worlds, really. And I'm always a fan of when uh, companies are able to do that. But you get this clamshell protecto, basically, with a card art that is removable. And the car is removable. And you can put it back. It's only held together by tape. That is a great way of doing things. I'm so glad that they did that. Now, this packaging is probably somewhat expensive to make, and that factors into the cost of the item, for sure. The cars itself, and again, I've talked about this at length in the previous video when I showed the Countach, but the cars are nicely done, quite detailed. Uh, they are heavy because they are metal-based, metal body. Uh, vehicles they do have you can see the disc brakes in there uh, with the calipers and the painted caliper you got inserted details of course for headlights and taillights it does seem to be scale accurate and the detail i'm gonna say is there and i think they do a pretty good job now i've got some other 143rd scale cars in my collection and i think this these hot wheels ones are fairly good examples I think the major turnoff for purchasing these is not necessarily the scale. It's the price. Them being $25 each, straight retail off the shelf, I think is a little high for most people and what they're willing to pay for these. And that is likely why these are going to warm the pegs for some time there'll be some hot models that come out when that gtr comes out they're going to do a gtr r34 i think when that one comes out yeah you know it's it's gonna sell uh that will that will sell for sure at 25 bucks piece people will buy it um out of pure speculation if anything else so i'm gonna get it too i'm gonna get everyone like i said i'm gonna get everyone that comes out in the first way year i guess is my plan so we'll see what happens. So 
just for fun, we got this guy. I, I picked this up. Six bucks. And so I believe these are $5.99. So $5.99 at Target. Relatively close to 143rd scale. These are actually 141 scale. Uh, these are pullbacks. I think these are the same ones that are made by like the Kinsmart brand. If they're not, they're not, but they're very, very close uh, to what you get with that. We're going to cut this without cutting my finger. Hopefully, cut this tag off. Uh, there we go. So, remove that. So what, what's different about this, and why is this only $6, and this is $25? Well, first of all, these don't come with any packaging. Okay, so that's out. And you can definitely feel the quality difference. This is very, very cheap feeling, in part because it's got that plastic base. It does have rubber tires. And of course, it has the pullback feature. So you do get that. And uh, it's got inserted details for taillights, although they're not done in a very detailed way in comparison to the Hot Wheels. It's not missing much, but it is missing a little bit. This is the Z06, of course, this is not the Z06. So there's gonna be some differences in trim and stuff like that. That's not really translatable, but uh, they're relatively the same, close to the same car. The headlights too, like you don't see as much, I guess, detail. Slightly different headlight, I guess, but uh, yeah, interior wise, pretty similar. Engine detail wise, there's definitely a difference, even though you can barely see it in here because of that tinted uh, window on the back. There is engine detail in this one, and there's not any painted detail in this one, so there's quite a few differences there. I'm gonna say these are definitely a premium. This is definitely a premium feel. It feels a lot better. It uh, looks a lot better. It, you know, you got the disc brakes. That's not present here either. This feels very cheap. This does have opening doors and the gaps are pretty decent. So you do have that as well. I mean, overall, this isn't a bad looking model. When you start to look really close at it though, this one definitely is better now is it you know five times better i don't know maybe it's got the hot wheels brand name too which just gives it something else that this doesn't have as well you know um which makes it instantly more collectible just because of the brand and brand recognition and stuff like that but just wanted to show that i figured I'd, i saw this there and i'm like you know what i'm gonna pick this up too because why not? We can sit and look at him under video, kind of just uh, under the camera, just kind of look and, you know, see, you know, what's going on. Scale-wise, I mean, they're, even though it's 141, I mean, they're pretty much dead on. Uh, I think they are actually dead on, so, you know, oh, I guess the 141, yeah, it's a little bigger. It's a little bit longer, but barely. So, all right, well, what do you guys, again, what do you think about these 143rd scale stuff? I mean, I'm not going to start an entire 143rd scale collection, but I do have a few that I think I'm going to hang on to for a little while. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, it could be pretty interesting. All right, let's get through the rest of the Hot Wheels stuff. So we're going to look at this guy here. And I think this is, you know, this is another reason why I'm getting a little bit, uh, Ir not irritate, or whatever. I'm lacking passion with the Hot Wheels is it's really starting to feel like a lot of, there's nothing fresh there. And part of it is when they started doing repeats of models, you know, and now it's like kind of rampant. Like this thing, I've, we've seen this. Like we see, we, we got both of these cars were already released. So there's not a fresh one in the pack. And I know it's sold. I mean, it's selling well. Uh, because these, this is the hardest one of the two to find, you know, because JDM, yo. But, uh, and probably the only reason why this was left behind is because this car was, like, cocked in the package. Like that. And it's probably the only reason why I ended up being able to get it. Um, because it was sitting like that. And, you know, you carded folks can't resell that when it's looking like that. Alright, so... Yeah, you know, it looks... It's an awesome model. It's really cool. I don't think there's a, any difference in this one compared to the other one. The only difference is probably the date code for when it was made, is my guess. 
Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's a cool, it's a cool Hot Wheel. It's uh, it's well done. It looks great. I mean, but it's already been released prior to this. And part of what makes Hot Wheels collectible is the limit limited factor. So if you're re-releasing models, they become less desirable because there's more available. Now there's a you know another side to that coin, which is okay. They're more available, which means people don't have to struggle to find them or not struggle as bad to find them. And maybe that's a good thing too. So I don't know. I'm just saying that, you know, part of the desire factor for Hot Wheels for a lot of people that buy them is the fact that they're limited or hard to find. So it's kind of like, you know, you love them for everything you hate them for. So that's just the way the way it is. All right. This guy, not the best Hot Wheels casting. I kind of like it, though. I think it's got a little bit of charm. Um, you know. People criticize this one quite a bit as being like June Amai's like worst casting. <laughs> I don't know if it's that bad. I mean, it's not. I, I get it, but whatever. So this is a repeat too. This was in an older car culture line. It's only been I think it's only been released one other time in this and in this exact same livery. I don't think they've ever used it for anything else. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, again, you know, I, the only difference might be that date code on the bottom for when it was actually produced. As far as I know. All right. So there's those two models that are definite repeats. Uh, this one, we know, I'm pretty sure this is the repeat. This is the fresh one. Or are these both repeats too? Is this in a team transport? I don't, I don't know. You guys will let me know. And, you know, again, it's just repeated models in two packs. The packaging for these two packs it's just massive. I mean, even if you're a card collector, it's like for two cars, it's kind of tough. I don't know why they just, they should have just stacked them on top of each other. Maybe put them in a blister card that would have been used a lot less packaging. I don't know, but here we go. So, um, yeah, the dot matrix uh, effect is there. But it's not as bad as some examples of car culture or premium Hot Wheels. So this one looks pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, this is the uh, Plymouth Belvedere Max Wedge. I like the Goodyear letter tires. That's cool. And then this has already been released, right? I think this was uh, uh, this one was in the uh, Drake Strip Demons car culture set. I believe it was. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You guys will let me know. I love this casting, though. This casting's really cool. So That's a really neat casting. So, pretty awesome there. I think it might be a lighter yellow, maybe. I'm not sure. But again, somebody will. Alright. And then lastly, this one, I don't know. To me, is the coolest one. It's got that Lexus in it. That's a brand new... I think that's a brand new tooling. So, the Lexus RC FGT3... So I think that's like the, the hot one in the set just because it's actually new. This we've seen already, right? The most well, super Toyota A whatever. Pandem BRZ. Okay. And then uh, the Lexus. I like it. I like the Lexus. It's really cool. I like it. It's all matte blacked out. And uh, I think, believe this is brand new casting. Lexus RC FGT3. Copyright date 2022. So yeah, brand new casting. It has like nothing for graphics on it. So we don't have to worry about dot matrix. Uh, poor resolution printing. It's got a gross feel to it because it feels like a chalkboard. And it's like actually giving me almost like the heebie-jeebie, like, chills, like, handling it. It's got a, a texture that I'm just, I don't know, it skeeves me out a little bit. Chalkboard texture. So there's that. I'm sorry for the wound on the finger, by the way. It's an eyesore as well, but you're going to have to look at it. All right. And then, uh, so there's that. So what do you think? I don't know. Where are you guys at with collecting? That's another, that's a good question. That's your homework assignment for the comments is where are you at? You have the same passion you used to have? Have you changed? 
is something different for you? I guess the question I would have is, is something different for you uh, this year than in past years? Has anything changed in 2023 in regards to your collecting style, attitude, all that good stuff? Curious. I'm just curious. All right. Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. I mean, Auto World is one brand that I'm just way too deep in to like back out of. <laughs> and since my buddy's been like purchasing me Ultra Reds like left and right, I haven't really had to like worry about trying to pick them up. And I'm never going to find them in store. I mean, like my, my area is, whew, that snapped right back in. That was awesome. Okay. So if you didn't notice that the back end of this was just poking out just a little bit. And I just put a little pressure on it, and it snapped into place where it's supposed to be. So that's good. And we don't have to really complain about that. I was going to. But, yeah, so Auto World, you know, I'm still way into and still trying to get everything I can uh, for them. So really cool. This is a cool casting. It's pretty much brand new. And uh, it looks really good. So this one has a chrome interior. The the ultra reds for this release are, uh, I believe, they're version A, B. Uh, I think they're version A. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, version A chrome interior, white base, white tires, ultra red body is the uh, traits that you're looking for. So very, very cool to check another ultra red off the list. It's got what looks like a paint chip right there. It feels like one too, but I don't think it is actually. I think it's the uh, little bit of overdone silver paint right there. Yeah, little flaw. Little flaws here and there that we have to live with as die cast collectors because they're very prevalent. All right, let's take a look at Kaido House. This is my favorite Kaido House tooling, the Fair Lady Z, just because I really like the way it looks. I like, you know, this just a non-stylized version of this car as well, of course. Designed in Los Angeles by Junimai, Kaido House LLC. Uh, and I've talked about this at length as well, but I really like the, the Kaido House Mini GT partnership. Um, there's no brand I don't think that would be able to do this with Junimai in any better way. And I love that they just kind of let him design these things and do what he wants with them. They're not for everybody. Not everybody is a big fan of them. Uh, but I am. And this has an opening hood. That's right. It's got the opening hood where we can... Uh, Open it from the inside. There we go. I'm going to pop this up a little bit. Here. This is an interesting design. I actually don't really want to use that sharp tweezers. Uh, don't have something else to poke into here with. Let's just, yeah, I guess we'll use this. So they give you a, a way to... It's kind of weird how this opens. And um, I'm trying to demonstrate it. You poke it, and then you kind of pull it out, and then pop it up. And then you can see the details inside. And then the hood stays up by itself pretty good. So really cool. I love the color scheme on this one. The red, yellow, orange, kind of classic, almost like Toyota-looking, TRD-looking color scheme. But... Uh, very, very cool. And then, of course, that signature Kaido House, like, base color, which is really neat. And then it's got alloy wheels, which are really cool. These things are just little pieces of art, and I'm a fan of them. Um, I like the Kaido House stuff. I do not buy every single one that comes out. I buy... I kind of stick to the more flashy models. If it's uh, something that's like a standard livery, like an Advan or, uh, you know, just something gritty, basic, whatever. I don't typically go for those, but the uh, stuff like this is right up my alley. I love the color scheme. This one actually looks good, too, this Christmas-looking one. Um, yeah, I just stick to the ones that I think really look good, I guess. 
So I'm not going to buy every single one of every single casting. I just try to get the ones that I think uh, appeal to me visually. Uh, and that's it. So I, these were good enough to grab, and I grab them. Really cool. So what do you guys think about what do you guys think about the Kaido House stuff? I think this is something that I and I can appreciate it because this is somewhat original, okay? It's just something different. It's a fresh thing. There's no other brand putting out this, right? So if you want this particular car with this wide body kit like this, which is completely custom, it doesn't exist in real life. Um your only option is to get this Mini GT. There's never going to be like an Anno 64 of this. There's never going to be a Hot Wheels of this, at least as far as I know. Um, th these designs will be used and put up for this. So in that factor alone, kind of makes them art-like, you know. And they're designed by someone who's somewhat famous for designing die-cast vehicles, you know. So to me, it's little, uh, they're little pieces of art. I think that they're, uh, they're very, very cool. So I appreciate the Kaido House line. I know not everybody does, and especially because they're not true 164 scale, I think that, that irritatingly shies some people away from them. But <clears throat> I don't know. They don't have to be. They're unique. They're kind of their own little collection and uh, their own little thing. So And, and I, I like them. So like I said, I'm not going to get every single one of every single casting, but I do appreciate them and I do like the collection as a whole. All right. <clears throat> mini GT. Sticking with Mini GT for a minute. Here's a stock Mini GT. Well, this is a Pandem. Not really a stock vehicle, I guess. Number 500. Congrats on 500 Mini GT. Uh, mini GT models, I think, are sequentially numbered. This is number 500. The Kaido House ones are not part of the, the, the count, so... So this is uh, distributed in the U.S. by M&J Toys, limited to 3,600 pieces in this M&J Toys packaging. Talk packaging a lot with the Mini GT. I love the packaging. Kind of get the best of both worlds with the, the Mio exclusive, except for you can't put it back on card. But you can store the model inside of here. If you're not familiar, I will open this up and show you. There's a little blister here to hold the vehicle. And you put the vehicle in and store it safely in its box. It'd be kind of cool if it was a window box, but it would make it less durable. So, I don't know, there's something cool too about a box that you can't see the car, the actual car on the inside. You only see like this uh, sort of rendering of it. It's kind of a neat thing to kind of pull it out and then see it, you know, in real life for the first time. Or, you know, if you haven't seen it in a while, you can rediscover it without looking it right through here. It makes you open it up and pull it out. So, I, I like that sort of uh, experience and uh, I think that's kind of neat and you guys know that Mini GT so Auto World's one of my favorite brands Mini GT is one of my favorite brands I like the Kaido House stuff you know I just uh, I like the stuff Mini GT that's another one I'll probably keep all my Mini GT Inno 64 is another one that comes to mind so I like Inno 64 I like Mini GT I like Auto World some Johnny Lightning stuff is really cool too there's a bunch of other brands that I like uh you know, Tomica Limited Vintage, all the brands that I show, but there's just some that I'm real passionate about, and I would I would put Mini GT in that camp. Again, I don't buy all of them, but I do get uh, all the models that I think look really good. And this is one that I thought looked really cool. I just like it. I like the color. I like how kind of flashy it looks. Mini GTs roll really nice. You get inserted details for headlights, tail lights. Um, just a cool looking little car. So I think that's, that's very neat. All right, moving on. The rest of what we got is some older items. And, uh, let's, let's start with this patriotic since we're just close to the 4th of July here. This patriotic puzzle. Uh, Johnny Lightning, patriotic puzzle, muscle cars. I have no idea if this was sold in stores or what. And in a new die-cast concept, Johnny Lightning presents the patriotic puzzle. Four vintage American muscle cars are included in a single blister card. Keep them in the package, and they form part of our eagle and flag package art. Break them out, and each becomes a rolling testament to the American way, with bold graphic elements that demand attention. This special four-car set will make you proud to be 
an American. All right. Will it? Um, 2002 copyright date. Johnny Lightning did all sorts of weird stuff and continues to do weird stuff. <laughs> and you got to appreciate some unique approaches to packaging and uh, unique approaches to, to what they're releasing. Again, keeping it fresh, I think, is a very key thing to keeping uh, customer interest. And it's neat to do some different stuff. And then it's kind of cool to look back on the stuff they did and think, wow, that was goofy or, you know, that was pretty cool. Uh, this one, maybe a little goofy, <laughs> but still kind of cool. I had to get this Firebird to join my Firebird collection, and that's the real reason why I would have grabbed it. it. Honestly, if there wasn't a casting I collected in it, I probably wouldn't have picked it up at all. But it was 8 bucks for four cars. That's $2 a piece. Not too bad. So we got the bird. We got the fire chicken. Uh, we got this uh, Cutlass Oldsmobile. I don't know if I have any version of this casting in my collection. That might be new. But we got this guy here. And we got this guy. Is it Chevelle? Yeah. Opening hood. Oh. Not sure I have a version of this casting either, so I guess we're knocking some, some toolings off the list. This one looks a little weird. It's GSX. Uh, P211. I don't know, something's weird about this tooling. It looks like it's almost like bent. It's probably an older... What's the copyright date? 1996. So this is definitely an old Johnny Lightning tooling. And it kind of shows in the way that it's uh, put together. And this the overall proportions in the way that it looks. So, got the eyeball right there. Alright, so that's that. Patriotic four-pack. Um, next, we got this weird thing. This is a Corgi. It's precision made. Precision made Corgi die cast vehicles. Well, isn't that nifty? Two dollars I paid for this on car. It's a Pontiac Firebird SE. Uh, what do we got? One year money back warranty. I can't imagine. I needed my dollar back, but uh, I don't know how much these things actually cost in the store. Who knows? Um, rear deck mounted arrow wing spoiler. It's safety tested. So that's neat. It says crafted in Great Britain. The Mitoy Co. Northampton, Great Britain, 1982. That's kind of cool. Um, there's some other castings that were in there. Uh, it's a Corgi Jr. Every Corgi Jr. is crafted from the finest die-cast metal. That's why we are only the only die-cast toy company that offers one-year money-back warranty for normal child's play. If for any reason this Corgi is broken within one year, return it to us with this card, and we will give you a 100% refund. It's that simple. Interesting. Not suitable for children under 36 months. And this is your warranty card. Kind of neat. The, the packaging is kind of cool. I kind of feel bad about opening it a little bit just because, you know, whatever. 1982. Probably 83. But whatever. Let's pull it up. Take a peek at that. I'm going to rip this up. I'm going to save. I'm going to put that in my little card pile for interesting old cards. I wish I do have, yeah. All right. So this uses the finest die cast metal. And uh, for sitting in the package for a long period of time, I will tell you this. Uh, the paint is not like cracked or bubbled or doing anything weird. And it doesn't have any packaging rub. And a lot of times you get like older cars and stuff, like the paint starts to bubble. You get some weird stuff going on. And I don't see any of that here, which is cool. Kind of cool like domed rivets that don't have like a center punch in them. So that's kind of interesting as well. It's kind of cool that it was actually made in Britain. It rolls, like, exceptionally well. We got a little bit of flashing here in plastic. That's the other thing. The plastic actually feels, like, very new. It doesn't have, like, an old, like, brittle feel to it. 
So maybe it is made with very high quality materials. I don't know. It's a Pontiac Firebird. I had to get it for my Pontiac Firebird collection. So in pristine mint condition. I don't know. This thing's cool. I'm glad I bought it. Uh, I'm glad I picked that one up. That's really neat. All right, so that's some of the stuff that I get more excited about, really, is finding weird stuff. Like old, weirder brands that just don't come across that often or don't come across in mint shape that often. I don't know, weird stuff like this box, mint and custom cruiser, racing champs, no idea. Oh, I thought that was a Corvette in the package. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's a Camaro. Uh... Now that we got it out of that bag, I can yeah tell that it's not proportionately great. It's not the best tooling. That bubble window in the back just looks really weird. And again, the livery looks a little weird. It looks like I'm sure this livery is not. It's from Japan Rally, which is it looks like Subaru logo kind of deal. But Diablo. Anyway, these are weird. They're like cheaper racing champions plastic base. Now see this base on this feels cheap. It feels really cheapy plastic it feels cheaper than this plastic i don't know but it looks pretty good not bad and then this viper i already had but my example was missing one of these rims like these little hubcap thingies come out they're plastic tires so i got this example to replace it because these were two bucks a piece and i just thought whatever i'll, I'll do it i gotta get something while i'm here Mm, there you go. It's pretty cool. It's a nice little Viper. Mm, did a good job on it. Apparently Greenlight's going to be putting on a Viper. Kind of interesting that they're under new ownership. Uh, well, they've been under new ownership for a little while, but now they got like new leadership, which is probably what's going to really make the difference. Uh, and they're going to start doing stuff under a new philosophy. I, I'm excited for that. That's one thing that's cool. We'll see what we'll see what happens with that. It's going to be interesting. All right. Matchbox. Barrett Jackson Chevy Bel Air hardtop. So this came out, we're going to say, approximately 2002. According to the date on the bottom, we need to... So these are like higher-end, detailed Matchbox. Some of the best stuff that they've ever come out with is kind of like this era as far as from a detail standpoint. This one's got painted details all the way around. Uh, we got a weird looking chrome base, but it's got to be that for the chrome bumper. It is a plastic base, but we do have rubber tires and we have uh, rims that are just, you know, not reissue, reuse, whatever, anything rims. I think they're basically supposed to be kind of prototypical to the vehicle. Um, they're probably not, but whatever. They're you know, I, haven't, I don't remember ever seeing them on any other car, I guess, I, that to my knowledge. They probably are used on a few, but whatever. We get a two-tone interior, kind of some details in there. It's actually a pretty detailed little Beller model. Um, and then there's these, these Matchbox collectible. Uh, Motor Trend collection. So these came out... Um, 1999 is the copyright date, so older than the other ones. Look at the packaging there. We'll start with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And these were actually quite detailed as well. Comes in this little display case. The packaging is obnoxious, I will tell you that. Um, I hate these things. Those are the worst. Ugh. Dang it, I'm gonna actually have to then twist it. And then that little cutter thing is. I think it's scissors will cut through that. It's a wire, actually, though. Oh, yeah, there we go. Easy peasy. Let's cut it on both sides. Well, why don't you come. Are you. What the hell? Oh, okay, never mind. The packaging is. Uh, so this is interesting. The packaging is wired to the cardboard, but the casting itself is actually screwed down to the base. You don't see that very often with Matchbox, do you? All right, all that packaging is getting tossed. All right, we got the dreaded rubber bands, too. So we're fighting lots of stuff here. 
rubber bands that apparently we're supposed to looks like just hold the door open so we need to dig those out and hopefully we'll be able to Ugh, gross these things just get so nasty oh, all right the door's shut we're gonna have paint damage for sure, and no, it's not for me picking at it with the. Uh... Yeah, we're gonna paint damage. I hate these rubber bands. I hate them. So, if we're gonna go worst packaging idea ever, it's to put these freaking rubber bands on the stuff on a collectible model. You put rubber that's gonna definitely deteriorate on something that you are selling as a collectible. And that is a recipe for disaster. So whoever short-sighted idea this was, and they still do it today. I think the rubber bands they use today, though, are um, maybe less of an issue. But, uh, yeah, these, these suck. All right. Uh, details. We got them. Looks nice and detailed. The door shut line is actually super tight on these. Look, there's a rubber band hiding in there too. I'm just gonna leave that guy. We're gonna pretend we didn't see that one. We'll close that and probably just leave that mess there as well. We got some paint damage right there on the side. There's gonna be nothing we can do about that. And again, the wheels are correct for a Jeep, right? I don't think these were used on anything else either. So they were doing some cool stuff. Aside from the rubber bands, they were doing some cool stuff. This is a good version of the Cherokee. Really cool. Um, I like this. Uh, I think it's good. It's a good 164 scale model. I'll get any of these collector ones. I can. Oh, shoot. They got a rubber band on this one, too. The next one is the T-Bird Concept Convertible. I'm going to spare you the... I'm watching me rip it out. Ooh. Hey, this one... We got literature with this too. Oh, by the way, these have a two year limited warranty. Not a one year, two years Matchbox was going for. Cool. What is the point of it? By the way, the other thing that <laughs> really grinds my gears, all right, is you guys, you US Target shoppers, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm gonna talk about in regards to warranty? So imagine you're going up to the uh, counter with a stack full of Hot Wheels to the self-checkout, and you got to scan every one and hit no thanks. I don't want to spend $3 or whatever it is on an extended warranty on my $1, well, $1.20, whatever it is now, Hot Wheels car. What a freaking joke. Did they really put that, did they put that in there? just to slow you down at the self-checkout. Like, eh, this guy buying a bunch of Hot Wheels. We're going to irritate him by making him have to, every single time he scans one, touch the screen and tell us whether or not he wants the warranty on his Hot Wheel. How many people buy that for a basic Hot Wheel? That is just wild. I should buy it sometime and then just come go home, hit the thing with a hammer, and then come back and try to redeem it just for science. Uh, this rubber band on this one is really bad. Really, really bad. It is mush and it is, ugh. it's coming off the paint though. Uh, there is some damage and uh, yeah, this is bad. So take your rubber bands off before your warranty expires. That's the moral of the story here. I'm gonna need like Goo Gone or something to actually get that all that residue off. But here's the model. Uh, the model looks decent. It's not the best example of one of this one from this series, but it's not bad. Oh, and this one has an opening hood. I just tried to open the wrong way. There you go. So that's pretty cool. But the rubber band, ugh. yeah, that's not good. Um, you know what actually works for that? Let's try it once. 
why not? We're at the end of the video, so you can click off of it if you don't want to see this, but I'm going to take a microfiber cloth, and then it's a trick. Uh, by the way, this gets off, uh, if someone ever wrote with like a, a Sharpie on plastic packaging, uh, this lighter fluid gets that right off, no issues. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit on a microfiber cloth, and then we're going to start this car on fire. No, I'm just kidding. And then uh, we are going to just see. So it's good at cleaning up plastic, is I guess what I'm what I'm going for. It should, and it has a nice smell. So hopefully this will just take this uh, goop right off. I'm sure Goo Gone may work just as well as this would. But uh, this lighter fluid uh, works quite well. And yeah, you can feel it getting smoother. And kind of cleaning up my car with a flammable liquid. Uh, I'm not advising that you try this at home. Okay. Don't, don't do it, I guess. I don't know. Do it at your own risk. Not, not. I'm not liable for you handling flammable liquids. Clear. All right. Uh, yeah, but that did work. She's much cleaned up now. Let's try it on this one. Still got some of it on there. It's actually kind of working to. I've never tried it to remove rubber band residue. And I'm glad I did because I thought we had a bunch of paint damage up here and we really don't. It's just residue from the from the rubber band. And this took it right off. So there you go. There's a hack for you. I mean, don't do it, but there's a hack for you. Pretty awesome. All right. Well, that's cool. Uh, I think we just salvaged the Jeep. I still got to get the goop up from inside of the thing, but uh, from the outside, it looks pretty good awesome. All right. That's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you guys again very much for watching. Highlight for me of this episode, probably the Ultra Red, you know, that's a, it's always fun to tick one of those off of the, uh, the old list. And then I like the Kaido house stuff. We talked about that enough, but again, thank you guys again for watching another episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as usual, and you have a good day.